and welcome to Uptown Tonight, where we do believe a rising tide does raise all ships. And we are here for the FM Aries Entertainers by basically showing off the FM Aries Entertainers and hoping that it helps raise the tide and all that other fun stuff out there. So I'm your host, Mr. Wayne Stallenfocker, or Discount Tom Cruise, or Tom Brady sometimes, and Steve Wozniak. I, people are strange, so I don't know where they come up with this stuff. I don't come up with it. I'll tell you that much. But tonight, we do have Case, the Case Face Wise, is going to be in studio with us. And we haven't talked. We've just figured it out for two years. Two years. I mean, my word. That is crazy. And I know he's got some stuff that he wants to talk about. And I definitely just want to talk with him. Because I think it'll be a good time. But first, we got to get to me. Because I am boring. And we got to get to what's going on. And there's Cedar right there with old Junior selling off our Uptown merch. We did actually sell some shirts this weekend, so we can find us sometime here in the future. I don't know when we'll be playing in Moorhead again. It's now the Moorhead Car Show. I think that's in mid-July. But if you find us out there, well, please pick up some merch. It keeps us on the road and keeps everyone happy. And there's old Zebras. Definitely doesn't look like that anymore. And that couch definitely doesn't look like that anymore. But he does say support our troops. And I'm a little biased since my boys in the... The military and all that fun stuff. He's been sending me lots of photos of his new gear stuff that he's been getting. It's a little bit interesting because they are sending them off to Korea here uh, soon. That's all he can tell me soon uh, for nine months. So support our troops out there. And we did take some new photos because we have our new guy right there on the right, Mr. Nick M. F. Taylor. How much more of a male name can you get? Nick Taylor. It's just so <laughs> articulate and ready to rock. But... We got a little couple of quick videos of Nick and of somebody who decided they wanted to, you know, they got to sit in. Here we are at the windbreak last Thursday and Friday, hanging out with Butter. And there's Nick. <laughs> and then we had on Saturday, we did a tribute. And this guy, he really, really wanted to get up and play the, the box. So I let him get up there at the end of the show. And he was having a good time with the alcohol on. <laughs> <laughs> having some good times out there so now well, that was basically my weekend and just got back to the regular old stuff but enough about me we get to get to mr case face over here how you doing casey it is great to be here again and we need to stop meeting like this way no we need to meet more often that'd be yeah. way way better well remember <laughs> well the other time it was four or five years Oh, that's right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll talk a little bit on Facebook, and then that's about as far as we go. And yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's how time flies. You're talking about how this 10 years ago was one of the first times you actually been in this house. Yeah. And that was back in the Six Gun Freedom days. Is that not that is correct? That is correct. Well, yeah, he was doing lead guitar, and I was just being the, the idiot in the back of the room. You know, well, actually, was... if I remember correctly, because I was a part of a project with John before that, and that was with uh, Logan. Um, I can't remember what that project was called, but I remember John talks to me later that night, and he's like, hey, um, right. I think you'd be a good fit for, you know, Six Gun. Um, so he had me come over and, you know, meet you, Chow, Tim. And Chow was the Chow lead, days. and you guys were looking for rhythm, so I think it was all all in due time. I believe it was a song that you guys had me practice. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, I nailed it because I played with you guys, I think, for two or three years, and then, um, like I said in the last interview two years ago, uh, I decided to quit the band because I was getting sober. <laughs> that's a strange way to do this thing usually right. it ends in the other direction <laughs> yeah usually um no it was like at the tail end of it it was very it was very private for me um i was actually suffering from uh very um heavy alcohol dependency privately um and one day i just woke up like i can't do this anymore because it's just like living my family curse that everybody in the family's a alcoholic so well um i figured that if i quit one i have to quit both because the environment that we had at the time i mean you were there just as much as i was yeah is that people would come up just be like i want to party with you can i party with you please <laughs> that's the way it was yeah <laughs> and uh <laughs> You know, being the, you know, young guitar player that I was, I mean, I'm not going to say no to people. I'm not going to say no to free drinks. Okay? <laughs> like, now, 
if you offer all me the a benefits drink, <laughs> yeah now if you offer me a drink it's one of these it's water the hard Please. stuff right there yes yes clear crisp water <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no since our last uh encounter a lot has happened um I'm waiting to hear about this because, yeah, it's been a couple of years mm -hmm. and you know, like just Facebook creepy. That's basically as far as I can go with any of that. Yeah. And well, I can usually keep pretty private anyways. Like I've always been that way. Yeah. But you've been throwing up some killer little guitar things yeah. here and there. And it's like, I've been yeah. getting better. <laughs> just like that little beast you have in the back there. Yeah. This is uh, one of my new ones that I bought. Uh, post later part in the story i'll actually tell how i acquired this um but these are the guitars i'm using now um actually it's got a a purple one which is actually an esp uh alexi leho e2 ripped and that guitar that guitar is hands down probably the best guitar i've ever owned um because the last time i was here i had that jackson hd6 yep that was my number one and that has now been bumped down to number three because Ooh. you got my <laughs> harsh ripped, you, got, you got me ripped you got pinky and then you got my jackson um so man where to begin um since the last time that i was here um i was still working at best buy um i no longer work for them i heard that I yeah. heard that, but I definitely I still got a picture of you doing the Best Buy things. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was uh, a very interesting way to leave. Um, well, I mean, it, I, I did my two weeks, and um, the reason I left is just because I spent almost a decade there, and I just couldn't see myself being there anymore. Um, that happens, yeah. Well, and I have a lot of friends that have told me like you know you need to find something better because your your skills and what you can do you know just is like that's why it's not going to pay that so with that said what i decided to do is that my coworker or my sensei i should say because he was my teacher in geek squad um and that's how i kind of refer to my you know supervisors and teachers as sensei gotcha um he left after 26 years of being there i'm just like and you know some behind the scenes stuff i knew more than i should have because they were starting to target me and i wanted nothing to do with it because i didn't do anything so um and he didn't do anything either because i was with the guy literally five days a week so um i started applying to places and had an interview at a company that i mistaked for a different company and still got the job. <laughs> and I even brought that up. In Nailed the it. And I even brought that up in the interview. And I'm just like, I think I applied to the wrong company. And uh, worked for them for about six months as a dispatcher for uh, uh, their techs. And uh, ended up leaving that job to go to uh, back into my audiovisual life. And this is like uh, last year around... November, I quit that job because I started that job in June okay. of 2022 and then went to this other company and I only lasted a month um, because they, uh, well, um, well uh, the term is pink slip, but the other term that I like to use is fired as hell. <laughs> Um, you ain't sugarcoating any of this no. one, player folks. Not even one. No. <laughs> um, I was unfortunately fired from that job for personality differences because yeah. I got in. My my trainer was very hostile. He uh, was very demeaning um, and called me a particular word that I am not going to say live on air because it'd be good. <laughs> I appreciate that, there, yeah. Casey. <laughs> but. Uh, he would refer to me as that term every day and what kind of took the like what broke my the back on side on it on it was like how he was training me was not necessarily what i would say training it was more what's the word i'm looking for here um it was more to fulfill his ego really um and he asked me a question and I kind of, and I got in his face, like, I just told him, like, hey, the way that you're training me is not ideal, 
and I was very, very, you know, professional about it. I wasn't yelling at him. But then I was getting harassment text messages from the lady in the office lady. And then my boss called me, asked me what happened. And he's like, okay, you know, let's just take the weekend to think about this do Monday, do some trainings, and then we'll talk on Tuesday. So I'm just like, I just sent him a message just bluntly. I'm like, if you're planning on firing me, let me know now. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do any disciplinary action. And come in Tuesday, he's like, you're fired. And I'm like, oh, yeah, figured that. <laughs> so that happened in January. It's kind of funny to look back at, but yeah. <laughs> It's kind of funny to look back at it, but it's actually like, I was talking to an old coworker of mine and it was kind of like, I mean, with my, I'm, I don't, I'm not like super religious, but it was like, to them, it was a blessing in disguise. Me, it was just like getting out of a bad relationship. I was right? about to say the same thing. For yeah. sure this was a blessing. Yeah. Which and somewhere it was, where need to be. Um, so with that said, um, I was unemployed for three months. Three whole months. Yep. And now we get into the segue of where I talk about this because I bought this literally a week after I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Well, I hope that was some inspiration for you at the same time. It was like, like I don't know, man. Like, I was, I was so down in the dumps just because, like, it was this weight, this constant weight of just everything just crashing down at me at once yep and i even went like manic for a while like that whole three months i was just going insane and um when i bought this i was playing guitar a lot more i but with north dakota unemployment you have to do three contacts a week i didn't know that Whoops. so there's two weeks i didn't get paid <laughs> but anyways um Long story short, I applied to 47 jobs, 10 callbacks, and now I've, I've been working at a place here in town um, for uh, three months now. And uh, I fix printers for a living now. Printers? Yep. Nice. <laughs> I am a uh, printer service technician for uh, a company called Marco. Aha. Yes, I was about to say Marco. Yep. And the Marco, funny thing is, hello. they always came out when I was at, uh, I was teaching on Finley. That was our big tech people. Yeah. They'd come out every once in a while. <laughs> so the funny thing is, is like, okay, so when I started, they had these like nice dress shirts, right? Yep. Um, I was able to finally order like my, my actual clothing that I wear. And <laughs> um, I was sitting with my boss and I was just going through like the shirts and all that stuff. I'm like, Oh, I finally get my Marco polos because I can wear a polo at work. Ah. And my boss is just like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've heard the joke a million times before. Too many. <laughs> One is enough. <laughs> so with that said, like, I can say that I finally found a place that like is like the past two places just haven't felt like home like and that's the hard part like when you leave a place that you've been working at for 10 years that's all you know yeah it's very it's true. scary actually i was scared when i left because i was afraid of failure and well it's changed that's the whole mm -hmm. that's the scariest part of anything is just not knowing what's going to be happening next yeah because i know when i left the park district i was there for 10 years as well and I'd say a couple of years ago when I went back and just, uh, you know, help. Uh, I just needed a summer job and they put me at, uh, what was that? Prairie Wood, just basically mowing and stuff. And mm -hmm. I was just putting like on an old glove. It was just so easy and simple. Just mm -hmm. walked in, just did your thing. So, I mean, I completely get that. And mm -hmm. trying to go somewhere else and figuring out all the new nuances and the people and the personalities. And yeah, there's just a lot of stuff mm -hmm. to take in. So it, it was um, because when I did when I left Best Buy to become a dispatcher, I had no idea what I was doing. Like I had to literally figure everything out because I only had two days of training, and they're just like, "Go!" <laughs> I like those um, places. Uh, same thing at the other company too. And that other company, like I'm not naming any of them because no, I, no need. there's no need. They're in the past, right? Yeah. Um, I appreciate the experience that I got at one of the jobs, the other one, not so much. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I, uh, speak it. 
I uh, bought this because, you know, I thought it was, uh, I thought, you know what, I need something to make me feel better. And I got more than enough money um, because I have been saving for just an occasion like this. And I just being smart. Yeah. And what? like, it was strange to be <laughs> unemployed, but financially secure. And I was losing the reason why I was losing my head is because I felt like, well, I need to do a job. I need to do something. But I kind of like yep, check hands are the devil's keeper. That's right. Definitely true. And I basically check marked it as like, OK, I took winter off. While everyone else was freezing their asses off outside, <laughs> I was too busy like playing video games, sleeping, playing guitar and all that. Stuff. Yeah, rub it in. Awesome. <laughs> It won't be like that this year, though. This year, I'll be freezing my ass off just like everybody else. Uh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say that. So, I should talk about this. Yeah, let's bit. let's talk about the axes. So, you no, know, Marco is pretty cool, but yeah. Well, like that, just just dandy. So, um, this right here—that's actually from Tim, right there. Oh, this this yep. casing. Casing. Yeah, whatever that is, a forty-four or something. <laughs> Beats me. I'm we're just talking that. about Tim Craft, so. Um, so we'll this. After, shout out to Tim if we see you. Yeah. <laughs> hey Tim. Um, so this guitar here. Um, one thing I did not pick up in the last interview that we did is so I talked about corn a lot. Um, yep. As Brian Head Welch being my main influence, but there's also another bigger influence, and that was Alexi Leho from Children of Bodom, who mm. tragically. He passed away, I believe, last year. He was, uh, which is very tragic because in my generation of guitar virtuosos, we have John Five, Alexi Leo, because I mean, like, all the solos that you can hear, that guy could play drunk. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> so, the first time I ever heard Children of Bodom, this is back when Headbangers Ball was a thing. And you're dating yourself there, son. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, you're supposed to be the young one here. <laughs> But uh, the song Blood Drunk came on off their album Blood Drunk, and Alexi had this guitar. And I'm just like, that is the coolest guitar I've ever seen. And I'm a huge Randy Rhodes fan, too. Yeah. So the take on this is that if I remember the story correctly, just reading it, like Alexi had a Jackson that was yellow, but it was stolen. And, ja and Jackson's just like, well, it's going to be like a year or so before we can build you one. And ESP's just like, well, we can build you one. And that's how, like, these models came out in ESP. And the difference between this one and, like, a Jackson is that you have this little cutaway here. Ah. So you can get up to the higher register a lot better. So this is an Edwards, though, and these are only available in Japan. Um, these are basically the Japan equivalent to, uh, or uh, America's equivalent to LTD in Japan. Um, but this is a very great instrument. I love this thing. Um, and there's been a couple modifications that we've done to it. Like I have an ABQ booster in this that Alexi used in all of his personal guitars. And then there's a little switch. You can't see it, but a little switch right here. You can hear it. You can hear it. But this switch is actually a kill switch now. So I modified it because this, this is what used to activate the booster. Okay. So I have it wired. So at this, when I flip it up. This kills the guitar sounds completely. So I have oh, kill nice! Switch. You have complete silence. Yep, complete silence. And the, when I first did that, I'm like, every single model of these that I'm going to be buying because I have two of them now, and there's one more that I want, is going to have the ABQ booster, which is about this here, and then this kill switch. And it's you know working with the guys at Flatland. They've been a, you know awesome, of just you know they're just great guys in general. Just you know helping me out as far as like. You, basically taking this thing and making it my own and i love this guitar a lot i really do um but alexi leo um was and still is a huge influence on me um purely due to how he wrote songs um and how good of a guitar player he was like this guy could play the fastest riffs accurately and he could come up with the coolest hooks and um, I was 16 years old, I think, when that when I found when I stumbled upon that uh, video late at night, and I'm just like, I got to do some more research on this. So that's back when like Blood Drunk came out, and so I looked up their previous albums, which I know they had like a bunch of them. 
like they had like hey crew death hole and uh um are you dead yet and then like even previous albums of that song just like went out and try to find all of them and the i can only find find two i can only find blood drunk i can only find are you dead yet um hey crew death hole couldn't find it couldn't find any of their earlier stuff either like something wild and uh other the other albums that they have i think like uh which one of them is like don't fear the reaper or something like that but uh i couldn't find those anywhere because they were that old but i remember listening to those albums so much just like corn like the last time i talked to you that i just got so influenced by his playing and like rhythmically he is i mean rhythmically and lead wise he's a genius and this is where i get a lot of my influences is from virtuosos of my generation and i do pull some stuff from the 80s too like i'm a, I mean like i was listening to judas priest earlier this week because i was just like in the mood for it and then when i was dismantling a printer for work i'm just like okay today's a johnny lang and uh stevie ray vaughn day oh there you go so you know i listened to like the greatest hits of stevie ray vaughn and i just remember going back so many years ago when i was 15 and i met my guitar teacher for the first time and he was playing pride and joy on his stratocaster yep <laughs> my guitar teacher was a and still is a huge stevie ray vaughn fan and he, that's why he put a lot of preference on me learning the blues pentatonic scale because he wanted me to learn that like you know blues is the fundamental of a lot of rock music and i i think it's true because i mean you look at zach wilde you look at randy rhodes and you even look at like you know dime they all played pentatonic scales yeah exactly yeah and i mean dime only knew of like i think a couple shapes because and i mean look how good he was you know the guy was a monster and Zach Wilde's a monster yeah. too, and he plays blues a lot. That's like his, I think, actually, I think that's his favorite genre, to be completely honest, because you see him use the pentatonic scale all the time. So uh, well, that's what I preference. That. That's where I preference a lot of my playing as well. Um, granted, I'm just uh, I'm just a guy that you know makes cover videos, but the I believe in like I said last time is I believe in accuracy and getting as close as I possibly can to what the artist represents which is really cool that should segue into the next thing about you starting to make these videos that you've been posting yeah on social media i don't know if it's just all on facebook or past that but i mean you got some amazing stuff that you've been putting up there and then that put you into another thing what's uh you were talking about that earlier yeah into more of a digital type thing so <laughs> it was um a purchase i made last year <laughs> before i got fired I spent a lot of money on guitar on gear. Sometimes you just gotta do that. <laughs> I haven't spoiled myself this much ever. Well, <laughs> not saying you don't deserve it, but <laughs> right. So the problem that I was running into is with the videos that I make is like, as I asked a good friend of mine, Aaron Dorval, I'm like, man, how do I, how do I elevate myself? Like, how can I get to the upper echelon? Of like where these youtubers are like how do i do this um so him and i were talking about digital amplification because sweet picking with stevie t i <laughs> i can't sweet pick with what a damn what i've been practicing for years and it's just the, i can do three i can do three strings i can't do like five or six i'm not uh i'm not chris brogrick who can just you know it just it looks so easy yeah he makes it What's look wrong? insanely easy <laughs> and he's a phenomenal player um but i was talking to aaron about digital amplification one day because i was asking him what he uses and he was telling me what he used and unfortunately the one that i wanted i can't i kind of get because it was backward and this is during covid when like some uh, you know capacitors were like very low in stock oh yep so that thing was back ordered to hell and back so I'm just like, I just need something that I can modulate an amp and do some simple stuff with it. So I ended up going with uh, a Line 6 Helix. 
And that thing has... Yep, Glenn Fritter, Fritter would not approve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of SMG just because it's fun watching Scream. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, I personally, I personally know that a lot of people are just like, oh, it's either, you know, like, either people have Axe Effects, Camper, or whatever else. Um, my opinion is, is that as long as it works for me, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's how it should be. Uh, because the nice thing that I like about it is I can fit my entire rig in a backpack, and I don't need to break my back carrying it. Like I used to do that Metaltronics at every show in my early twenties. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that I switched to digital. Cake. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that thing, man, like that thing was so heavy. But it sounded so good. It sounded so good, <laughs> but I'd almost challenge that my H my uh, HRP that I have my uh, other amp. I almost challenge that it sounds better. Oh, oh, I would have to bring it to my guitar now teacher. Now we're talking here. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I think my guitar teacher actually, uh, I think he actually got a JCM 800 or something like that. Okay. Because he's been, because he used to have that back when he was my age. Like he's like, yeah, I had a JCM, I had a JCM and I had a Marshall, Marshall a full stack. <laughs> I think he has a full stack too. And he's just like, you're going to get it one. I'm like, if I'm going to get any Marshall, it's going to be a 401H because those things are amazing amps um but i don't need it because now i got my digital amplification so um although i am still old school i do love the sound of tube amps i do well you have to yeah. that and just the feel of them mm -hmm. that's why i used to come in this room actually this very room we used to have an old twin reverb and i'd be playing my Fender Swire 2 Stratocaster through that thing, but that thing's a 100 watt tube. What was yeah. it four six two sixes in there? The GT tubes, and I just cranked that thing up, and man, you just mm -hmm. felt the music. It was just cool. Yeah, well, nothing you, like it. Well, even my guitar teacher, like before he got that Marshall, he had a Fender Deville. Yep, and that thing, like that's let, sixty, that, right? I don't. Don't quote me. I don't know, I but know nothing. The Deville. <laughs> That amp is amazing. Like, I mean, he was cranking out blues tunes like it didn't need, like, it, like I could feel every note. Yeah, exactly. And that was the fun part about him. Yeah. And not that, picking him up. Right. <laughs> not the picking up part, but like the sound you get from him is just so, it is so good. And um, I still revert back to them, but I can see like, like with digital amplification, it is getting pretty damn close. Like, um, I know that there's purists out there who would obviously disagree, but in my opinion, it's like if I could plug into a house PA and not break my back carrying in a cab and a, you know, speaker cabinet. See, that's just the smart thing. I've seen that happen a lot. I know Cedo uh, and our band did that for a while too with just playing bass. Just you literally had a pedal mm -hmm. that was a preamp basically and I just went right into the board and everything sounded great. But yeah, you don't have that stage wash that you normally have. Yeah. Now us old schoolers, you kind of we miss that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if your in-ears are dialed in i don't know i'm just making things up but i would think that'd be the best way to go is exactly what you're doing right now yeah and it cleans the stage up too you don't have all that extra stuff but do you still have a pedal board then yeah that goes into all that okay yeah I like so you got thing, leds on it i do rgb oh, yeah i yeah. do and i actually program Ooh, yeah. each channel <laughs> to their own uh color because my uh my uh my metal one is like red my crunch channel is orange and my clean tone is green there you go color coordinated it keeps you organized yep. in multiple ways man yeah. <laughs> casey i think you're on to something here <laughs> my favorite thing about that helix is that like when you rename stuff like it, like so i did i was so hard pressed right like i'm just like do i get the helix lt or do i get the big dog and I talked to Aaron about it, and he's just like, well, you got the, he's like, you got the money, you might as well just go with the big dog, yeah. you know? <laughs> so I did. What is that? And Hurt once or something, you don't have to worry about it, or you can yeah. basically just, hmm. yeah, I'm yeah, screwing the whole buy, thing up. <laughs> if, no, if you buy, like, I get, I get the, tra like, the train of thought you were on, because 
There's like, a saying the, for it. There's, there, there isn't like a, a hardware difference. The only difference between like an LT and the Helix itself is the casing. Because the casing on an LT is like a more of a pla- like a durable plastic, while the Helix is made out of like very like I think it's actually uh, steel. Well, that's gonna last a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, um, with that board, I have access to so much stuff, and um, I actually messaged Aaron out of nowhere. I'm just like. Uh, I think I put it in quotations. Welcome, Casey, to digital amplification, where you're going to be basically tearing your hair out trying to find a good tone. Because <laughs> um, I find myself like, you know, back when I was younger, like, and you can attest to this, is that I didn't think two shits of this. And now I'm like in a completely different world where I'm like, okay, not just what sounds good on stage, but what sounds good in a, in a mix. Yep. You know? <laughs> Welcome to maturity. Yeah. It looks like it gets worse the older you get, too, as you see these other guys that are even older than you, that they're always they're chasing that dragon. They're trying to find that just that purest tone mm-hmm. that just sings to them. I just yeah. think that it's like one of those things that it's not a, it's not the unattainable, but it's like your tastes change so much as you progress, right? Like, back when I was younger, I wanted something that was high gain, Balls to the wall, in your face, all the time. Exactly. And now that I'm older, I've backed the game down for clarity. Oh, <laughs> Casey. Um, He's growing up so fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's taken a lot of people to tell me that. They're like, dude, you need to back off the game, man. Like, and it was... And it's true, and now that I've been using, like, the ABQ booster and the Edwards and soon to be my E2, it's, to me, like, when you're, especially when you're recording, like, like, that's where I'm getting with, like, my YouTube videos is that now I'm doing, like, pr- like recording my guitar tracks, and then I'm posting the videos, because that way I get the clearest audio possible, and I actually double track my guitars. Nice. Because picking that up, yes. Because if you um, listen to my videos on my personal Facebook, which now um, a lot of my videos will be available to the actual public, um, because I turn that setting off. Because I'm just like, all right, I'm confident enough. If I get some person that doesn't like my video, who cares? Like, not a big deal. I'm still waiting for that hate because then you know you made it. Yeah, right? <laughs> I haven't gotten any. <laughs> well, any publicity to me is good publicity. Yeah. Um, so um, I was talking to uh, Aaron and Jay about it, and they're just like, yeah, you need to start doing like recording software. So when I bought my Helix, it came with Cubase, and mm-hmm. I hated it. I hated that program. Oh. It was difficult for me because I was like, this is too much. And then they told me about Reaper, and I learned on that so quickly. And when you listen to my videos, you could like, you can hear that I'm I got one, one guitar in left channel, one guitar in right channel, and that was actually uh, an ad- advice I got from Aaron to do because I'm just like, wouldn't it make sense just to have two guitar tracks armed at the same time and record it that way? He's like, no, you want to do it individually. Because um, that way, it's a lot more consistent. Um, and well, you have that, and the humanity rebu- or lives between the one and zero. Yep. In between there, where the, wherever that is. Yep. <laughs> so with that said, that's how I'm doing that process now. And believe it or not, the videos I'm taking, I'm actually using my phone. Yeah! <laughs> I'm not even using that webcam that I bought for it, so... I have a little setup at home, and it's a funny story. So for that first video that I did uh, with my, like, push it, um, I have this propped up on my computer with my vaporizer right in front of it (laughs) to hold it up so that way I could actually get a good video going. And then I uh, recorded that, and I got that done the first take, and that's the beauty of the recording process that I only need to record the video once. I don't need, but the audio part, I have to record and redo just as much as I used to, but now I don't have to do two things at once. Beautiful. So 
that's the step up in the process that I did um, to kind of elevate my guitar videos. Because the thing that I'm trying to capture when I'm doing the guitar videos is something that I always wished that I had back when I was learning guitar is like, I wanted to have a good angle so I could see what their hand was doing. And that is something I consciously do whenever I make a video is I consciously aim my camera directly on me so that way people could see where I'm playing and they can see what strings I'm hitting. Gotcha. So that way it's also teachable um, because that's how I learn. Like I was actually, so I went to Rammstein last year and uh, down the cities. Yep. That you show suck. was, I don't want to talk to you no more. That show was the best show I have ever seen <laughs> I've in my heard entire that life. Multiple times. Um, but um, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Aaron on the way back and um, um I was just asking, we were just talking about, you know, guitars and just audio in general. And this is where a lot of this stuff came up. It was like, how do I elevate and get to this point? And, you know, this is what it's turned out to be. Is that I want this to be not only a video to post to my friends to see, like, hey, Casey's still playing guitar. But I also want to inspire people to play. And I've actually inspired one person. And it's not somebody that I thought I would have inspired. Hey. Because um, I got a message from my kid sister, Lauren. And she's just like, hey, where do I go to get a good bass? I'm like, why? <laughs> um, and she's like, well, I want to learn how to play bass. I'm like, okay, um, this is the place I go to. I go to, you know, I'm wearing their shirt. Um Flatland. 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 Best place ever. Do they have a jingle? They should. They should. Yeah. I think they should. I think they should do a commercial. I'd love to see Brett and Paul do a commercial. Flatland. 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 <laughs> you can call me up. I got it ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, um, I asked her, I'm like, yeah, I got a, I got a base that I haven't used. It needs a lot of TLC, um, but we can get you a good amp. We got her like an amp egg. Uh, two, Beautiful. Uh, two hundred and fifty dollar base amp, and that thing it just rattles. That thing's awesome. Um, so the biggest question I asked her, I'm just like, okay, who inspired you to do this? Like, was it your boyfriend? Was it a classmate? Was it like somebody online? And she's just like, no, it was you. <laughs> online. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I'm just like, okay, so why me? And she's just like, well, I see what you do, and I think it's so much fun. Yeah. And the best part about it is that I've actually kept up with her on it, showed her a couple things, and she told me, she's like, I didn't understand how therapeutic this would be. I'm like, that's why I've been doing this for 16 years. Yes, exactly. Because, like, music to me, like I said in the last time, has always been around me. It's been the embodiment of my entire life and to have this as an outlet to let everything out that I want to um even if it's just learning other people's stuff like and posting it for friends to see it's the most meditating thing I can think of because I get so lost in learning a song exactly and even like my man like i'm so manic about it too because like that showed even back when i was in six gun as well as like i'll come to practice and i was always usually on my a game like holy sh like holy shit casey actually learned a good chunk of the set list already you know and that's kind of how i do it and that's how i post my videos because that's how i've learned like my learning is very hybrid i read tabs but i also watch people because I see what's on the tab, and if I don't think it's correct, I see how other people play it, and I take a hybrid of the two. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and that way, I even look at the performers and how they do it to make sure it matches, because I want to play it verbatim to the artist. Um, so that's why I do actually like a ton of research into like the songs that I'm learning, because... I want to be as accurate as I possibly can, and that you're is... saying pro tabs isn't accurate. Now come, on. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm making that part up. No some, diss to pro tabs. <laughs> some of them are. Some of them are, but 
I have to be sure. <laughs> like I have to be. Um, just because that's how I've like that's how I've always approached guitar. Like, um, even back when I was learning with my teacher, like I was always trying to okay, how do they play it? And he would show me how they play it. Yeah. So that's always good. You got a couple of comments up here for you. Damn. You got Kalen Doden says, we call that in the industry being fed to the wolves. Yeah. So that's not good. And then Brittany Wise, is that your sister? Yeah, that's Britt. Hi, Brittany. I got to sway you. Hi. <laughs> Shout out to you, Casey. You should make that jingle. <laughs> yeah. mm. Ah! Mm. <laughs> it's funny because I have to go see them this weekend. <laughs> there I'll we go. Them about it. <laughs> Um, it's come up with a few things, just like, yeah, I'll just let you have something to, to taste. Of. Yeah, yeah, here's my mixtape. <laughs> I mean, it's summer, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, so, like, the, and the process has only evolved, like, as I've talked to, like, you know, working with you all those years ago and talking with, like, other, you know, guitar players, like, the biggest compliment I've ever gotten um, was actually on the way back home from Rammstein from Aaron, and um, I was asking him just like any, if there was anything that I could do to improve my uh, playing, and he's like, "Well, of course there is. Like you can always improve, but there's like, he's like, you can do things that I can't do, and there's things that I can do that you can't. And he's like, that's the part of your guitar identity is that you're finding your own way." Mm -hmm. um to be you know your own journey because like any instrument that you you that you play i don't care if it's the flute i don't care if it's violin i don't care if it's bagpipes everything is a journey of expressing yourself and that's always rang true to me because not every guitar player is the same like and i think that was like the biggest like the hardest thing for me to learn is like i was trying to be as good as everybody else in town. Like I was trying to be like, you know, part of the greats. And the thing that really hit home is like, I accepted the fact that I'm like, hey, I am a good guitar player. And I don't say that with hubris. I, I say it as like, I can hold my own. Good word. Um, I'm very, and usually when people say that I'm a good, good guitar player, I'm just like, then you must be deaf. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, recently, actually, um, I went on a really, really nice date, um, and I actually played uh, guitar for my date, and she sang along with me. Nice! And it was so wonderful. Um, I've never had that on a date, but also, like, I was super nervous, I was, like, fucking the guitar parts up really bad. <laughs> um uh so we were sing so she was singing ghost tunes and she's a fabulous singer like like i could fall asleep to her singing like that's how good it is very nice in my opinion um and she is match made here yeah well she's super special um yeah. to me um matter of fact like actually i think i, I like we we're talking one day and i just called her like sunshine she's just like i'm no sun on the moon i'm like Okay, then your nickname is Suki, because <laughs> Suki is Japanese for moon. So, um, not Saki, no, Suki. Suki. <laughs> T S U K I. Um, so, no, it's been a very positive um, experience. Um, like, I, I never had a date like that before, and it was super cool because the past couple of years, like, I've attempted to, you know, get out there, and it has been incredibly hard on me. To the point of, um, uh, I don't want to necessarily say it, but it's like it got bad weight, really bad. Um, very, very sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was. You know, I came out on top though. Um, I am now on medication to kind of level my anxiety and my depression. Um, and uh, you know, it's just learning self value and understanding that if things go wrong, it's not necessarily your fault. No, not so at all. It's uh, part of, it's forgive, it, a lot of the past two years is 
like then forgiveness and it's not for the people that have you know hurt me it's forgiveness for myself um because i have been so hard on myself for so long that i'm so used to it that i'm so used to the negativity of and just thinking the negative stuff immediately and it's one of the hardest things i've had to unlearn and just be a positive outlet and be and that's what i think gravitates a lot of people to uh, me personally is like i mean i got a temper i'll be the first to say it <laughs> And I think you've only seen it once. I've uh, seen it once when I was at practice. But <laughs> I um, that. <laughs> uh, the thing that I try to do is I try to be as you know calm and understanding as possible, and that's a, that's a big part of growth. Um, in the past ten years, really, is just trying to wrestle those emotions. And uh, you know, the past two years has been the biggest emotional struggle, like going from Best Buy going to the other two jobs, losing my job for three months, dealing with narcissist like narcissism and people abusing um, me for my kindness. And the hard like another lesson I learned is only allow people to have so much control. Yes. That's exactly um, it. And the people that deserve your kindness are the people that I deem are worth that time. Because um, it was funny, um, with my new job, I had to go down to South Dakota for three weeks, and I made some friends. And my friend, one of my friends I made down there, um, she made a comment, and she's just like, Casey, you're very, uh, Casey, I don't want to say that you're antisocial, it's just that you're very choosy on who you spend your time with, because you don't, you're a person that doesn't want to waste too much, you know, energy on where it's not going to be used well. And I wasted so many years of my energy on things that didn't deserve it. And now what I'm doing is taking control back in my life. Exactly. Again. So it's kind of like emotional sobriety now to me. Because learning how to not be so hard on myself and when people make nice comments, of accepting them is... That always been a hard thing for me because I'm just thinking like, okay, it's all bullshit. They're just trying to pull my leg. No, um, now that I see it from a different point of view and a more positive light, you know, it's like, it's really nice to get those comments and see people be like, Hey dude, you know how to play. Um, and I, which leads me to, which is very, very true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads me to another thing. I've been talking to uh, another local artist here in town, and from the sounds of it, um, you know, seven. You know, when I left Six Gun all those years ago, I vowed to myself that I'd never see a stage again, just because what? of how things went, and I had such a bad, like, I didn't want to say a bad experience. It's just that, like, looking back on it now, it's. There were some things that I definitely disagreed with that I want to, that kind of made me a little sour on it. But I have decided um, that I'm going to be more than likely working with this person, and I'm hoping that I'm hoping that if things go well enough in our discussions, because him and I are friends, um, you guys will see me on stage again. Excellent. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I wonder if that one is in the chats right now, too. I don't know if you want to disclose it or not, but... What's that? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not sure if I want to disclose too terribly much okay. because I haven't gotten too much uh, say from the person that we both mutually know. Exactly. Um, unless if they give me permission. <laughs> um... <laughs> And I think I just saw a hi, kiddo, and that's from my mom, I think. Yep, there you go. <laughs> but shout out to Rose as well. <laughs> and thank you, Brittany. Dun, 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 dun. Who else we got on there besides? Yeah, it looks like we got some comments. That's... But this is a good segue into your photos real quick. 
Oh yeah. It's the ones I've grabbed here. So looking very stoic right here. Yeah. So no that lands in the background. Yep, that was actually that picture was taken outside the cabin in our uh in Medora. I was actually um a groomsman for a friend of mine's wedding and we went out to Medora and that was actually uh the day before I became sober. Oh very nice. Yep. Very nice. Then I had to get the Best Buy one. Yeah, it's because that was uh, during overnights. There was a guy there named Charlie who would always bring Funko Pops, and he had uh, people take pictures with them. And uh, Charlie and I had a really good relationship, and he was a really good guy. And you know, that's back when I had my eyebrow pierced and my lip pierced, and I used to smoke cigarettes, and I was super skinny back then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think I weighed at like 165 back then. Yeah, I wouldn't a doubt long it. Time ago, <laughs> but uh, those are like the merchandising side of Best Buy was those like that picture there was probably the best time to work at Best Buy. It was awesome. It was during overnights, and I had a blast with that crew. It was so cool um, to you know be fr become friends with Charlie and just like all the overnight guys and just doing that for three months. And it was like it was a great time. I'll do it all over again. This has some explaining to do. Oh, that one. Um, so we're doing an escape room, and I saw what? that they had cheerleading outfits, and I'm just like, I'm gonna just put this on, and I put it on, and I put it on because I don't care. I'm like, I was so not even near that. I was just so that was some kind of Halloween thing or something. I was going to. No, that was an, an escape, escape room. room. Yep, escape room. It was uh, that was a left turn in my book. Tons of fun, and I, oh. and I, I mean, I wore that like a champ. <laughs> Jay says permission granted. All right, so all right, <laughs> Jay, we love you, man. So I really miss you. <laughs> Jay and I have been in the works, and I will be joining him for um, two. Pro uh, him and I in the talks of him, of me joining him for two of his projects. Very, very, very cool. Now you talk about positivity. There's Jay. Yep. Right there. Jay is ultra positive, and it's just, it's just amazing to watch him. He can be in like in those dire of anything, what's going on, and he just just brings out the best parts of everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so refreshing. To he, around him. Like, so honest, refreshing. Like honestly, Jay has honestly been a huge, and everybody has that I have talked to. Um, been a huge supporter of my mental health in the past couple of years and just getting here so big shout out to jay for you know listening to me uh <laughs> complain and well you're whine. sitting on his couch right there right <laughs> um, thanks jay we're still using it <laughs> <laughs> but uh no jay and i have been talking about it and i know that he's been wanting to you know have me as his guitar player for a long time and i'm just like my question was to him i'm like you think i'm good enough for this he's like yeah. <laughs> <coughs> oh. So this photo, this is special. The ghost one. Yeah. Yep, this is special. So my sister, um, Brittany, and I, um, like as much as we butt heads, the thing that you, that her and I can agree on is that we both love music. Um, we both took a different approach to music. Um, Brittany primarily likes to go to shows. She likes to listen. And I, you know, took it a step further and, you know, wanted the instrument. But she won tickets and meet and greet to Ghost, and she brought me with because she knows I'm a huge Ghost fan. And that's kind of something special that, you know, Brittany and I share is that, like, um, Avatar, for example, that is Brittany and I's band. Like, I told, because I learned about Avatar actually through you. Um, Let It Burn was on your to board. Let It Burn. So I started listening to them, and then I told Brittany about them, and we got, like, she got so big into just the thematics and the actual, like, just music that Avatar makes that every show that they have had in town here, her and I were present. Matter of fact, I have two Hawaiian shirts now from, so because they came here last year. Okay. And I bought a Hawaiian shirt there. And my sister just went with her boyfriend to the Minneapolis show, and they came out with a new one, Ooh. and she bought that for me, and this hat, so that I wear every day. So thanks to the uh, kid sister for that one. There you go. And she says, "So many bands I love are because of you, bro." Hundred percent. Yep. Well, and like that's the that's the cool thing about having 
like siblings that listen to the same music as you is that you can have like those deep discussions about like song meanings and stuff like that. I mean, shit. I mean, Brittany and I sing in the car like to Avatar and stuff all the time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, I mean, when, uh, what song is it? Um, Paint Me Red comes on. Yeah. Like, that's like, that's mine and Brittany's song. Matter of fact, I was like last year when they came, I was in front the entire time. But when, you know, Paint Me Red came on, I actually pushed Brittany to the front. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted her to, you know, be able to see this because that's like her favorite song as much as it is mine, too. So, and, you know, I'm taller than her, so I can still see the stage. So, <laughs> so there you go. That's me fishing in Castleton. Now, is this something new that you do or is this something you've um, always done? I, so the last time I went fishing when I, was, when I was 16 years old, I was with my dad and I picked it up again like years ago because... I needed to find a new hobby and like something that brought me peace and I don't know what it is about Castleton and Reservoir dude but that place is like the most zen as fuck place I have ever seen like I love the trails that they have like because it goes in a circle around the whole reservoir and I don't even care that if I catch anything like it's just the motion of casting and catch and release like it's just that sensation of calm and it's something I haven't done it in a couple of years, um, but I do plan to maybe go out a couple times. Uh, I think I think the last time I went fishing was two years ago. Oh, very. So good. I decide. So more than likely, I'll probably be hitting it again, just to kind of you know, just bust out the fishing rod, man, and just go out by myself. Just do it. Yeah, I didn't know you did fishing, so that's it. Yeah. And then you have that great photo of yourself right there. Yeah. <laughs> that was taken right before an interview, actually. I'm just like. <laughs> Because I was looking, like, I was sitting there just waiting for them to... need your 8x10 glossy there. <laughs> well, here we go. I was uh, just sitting there, I was just waiting for them to interview me, and I just looked behind me, I'm just like, this brick. I'm like, this wall is perfect. So I took a selfie real quick, and that is actually my work, my professional work picture, too, because I talked to my boss, he's like, actually, that's really good. You can use that. I'm like, I'll kick ass. So... With that said, that's how that picture came about. That's uh, I just decided to use that as my professional work photo, and uh, that's what I've been using at work. Very good. But now I got to get to the weekly report here. So yeah. We're definitely going on overtime, but that is okay. I mean, we're great, great conversation happening here. But I can ask you this question, let you think about it. Is that we're going to move forward with your YouTube? I'm going to quote that one with yeah with quotes career here what do you plan on doing with all that and we'll get to that in just a moment so see that we miss you man all right where are we heading to uptown oh there isn't much happening in uptown but at windbreak got aaron simmons on thursday slam up on friday and the fm all-stars hitting the stage on saturday off there with butter and attack we got family garage sale because i'm a garage sailor that starts tomorrow at uh, 8 in the morning. So, hmm, interesting. I might have to hit that. And then at the Fargo Moorhead Community Theater, Hello Girls the Musical is still going on out there until uh, Sunday night. So, looking for that musical? There's your place to go. Downtown Dempsey's have the Aaron Simmons Band on Wednesday, happening probably right as we speak. And then tomorrow night, open mic night with Gina Powers on Thursday, Seth Anderson on Sunday, the 11th. At the aquarium, we have Joel Bartell with Admiral Fox, Windsor Dides, and Jeremiah on Saturday. At the Alibi Lounge, we have open mic tomorrow night. And then Blarney Stone, Third Street Blues Band, tomorrow night as well. And then Peter Wilbur, Lord Peter Wilbur of... Uh, Uptown fame, along with Aaron Nye, who's uh, is going to be playing there on Sunday, uh, the 11th, and I believe it starts at 11 a.m., and the fun part is, is that both uh, Peter and I will be out of town this entire weekend, so he's got to come in hot, or whatever, he's, he's got a big weekend ahead of him, so good for you, Peter. And then we got Troll, we got Moving Parts tomorrow night, along with Charlie Young on Friday, and Hayden on Saturday, the 10th. Downtown, we're still at the Front Street Tap Room. And we got open mic night with Travis Niros next Monday, the 12th. And then the cellar, we have mic, uh, open mic night with Mark Wade Belcher. Happening probably as we speak. So you're looking to tighten up that two minutes of stand up. That's the place to be. Chris Higgins and Paula Kowinski. I'm going to say that. Hopefully that's right. On Friday, the 9th. And then we have the Side Street Jazz Night on Monday, the 12th. We have the MJ Saloon. The Jackson 3 will be out there both Friday and Saturday. Whoops, I'm sorry. I only got Saturday now, but it is Friday and Saturday. 
And then we have the Jasper Hotel, Dylan Sperlin, his residency out there this month, so that's tomorrow. And then Tailgater Special Blend hitting the stage tomorrow night as well. Downtown Acoustic Corner. Tonight, Kyle Colby's at Murphy's Pub, just a few blocks from here. And then Rick Adams will be at the American Legion in Moorhead. Tomorrow night, we have Gordy Christensen at Camp Lone Tree, 701 on the roof. And then we have Jim White and Spicy Pie. Michael Pink at Silver Spike. Brady Robertson off the Sweet Shots. Mike Morris at Hooligans. And then Matt Downer is going to be at the Side Street Grill on Saturday. Nothing's happening Friday, I guess. Saturday, the 10th, we have Pepper Ashmore at the Roundout Saloon. And the Jensen Sisters will be at the Swing Barrel Brewery. And we're out of town at the old EA. Yeah, we got all aces on Friday and Saturday this week. And then the Laughing Sun Brewing Company in Bismarck Band Area, our favorite brewing company in the Bismarck Band Band Area. We have Jen Howard on Thursday. Avatide with uh, Richard Lowen on Friday, and then uh, the Prairie Wranglers on Saturday. At Zorba's and Park Ravage, we have Brian Lowry on Saturday in Wilderness Bar, uh, Big Fork, Minnesota. That is us at the Wilderness Bar up in Big Fork, Minnesota on Saturday. And then on Friday. Why do I have Thursday on there? That's on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and then Friday we are at somewhere, but I, I'm not entirely sure if that's a private party or not, but... So I didn't post that one, but we are also somewhere up there in the northern part of the lake. But that's all we got for you this week. But remember that uh, these times and dates can uh, change at any given moment. So please contact your uh, venues and or, you know, artists before you venture on out. So back to Casey. And there we go, Mr. Case Face. As your career develops with the YouTubes and the Facebooks and all that other fun stuff. What's, what's your plans uh, going to next? My big thing that I want to do, um, and I'm very happy that you asked that, is to essentially not only hopefully grow as a guitar player, but also like growing as a just an individual. Um, and you know, music has always been so important to me, and it's always helped me in such a positive way. It's like, what can I put out there that might help somebody too? Because my big thing is, is that for how the past couple of years have gone and how dark it has gotten for me um, to the point of, you know, I'm not going to say it, but you can connect the dots. Um, I want to put out as much positive energy as I possibly can and something just truly special in each video that I do, whether it be a cover or if it's even an original song, because music Excellent. is a very powerful thing and you don't know who, and the best part is that you don't know who it's helping. Very, very true. So, true in all cases. Do you have a Facebook or a, a YouTube no, channel of any sorts? No, nope. but I should probably start. Oh, now, here's the perfect time to start one. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can even make up the name as we speak here. Or yeah, just like send that. it to me, and I'll definitely make sure that it's in the um, <laughs> all the information below and all that. So. Yeah, I think I'll uh, probably work on that at some. I'll probably work on that at some point because I'm like I'm not afraid. I'm not, I'm not afraid to put on my covers anymore. Like I used to keep it private, but now that I've opened up my like my Facebook uh, uh, guitar covers to the public, I might as well just do the YouTube thing or TikTok or whatever the kids are into these days because i can say that now yep <laughs> <laughs> stevie t watch your back <laughs> so like that's just kind of my game plan is to, like because i used to take it so seriously like i really wanted to be a like a rock star i wanted to live that rock star life and now it's like right now i just want to have fun like i want it to be fun again i don't i want it to be a very positive experience for not just me but also for the people involved in the show whether it be bandmates or the crowd or my online audience um because that to me is the most important is like every view that i get even if it's 10 seconds somebody took 10 seconds out of their yeah, day to see exactly. what, what i can do um so that's kind of my thing so a lot of people are going to be seeing a lot more of these here because I am uh, yeah, kind of beautiful. I'm uh, pretty much going to be using like those guitars primarily. Maybe bust out some old ones for old time sakes, like that Explorer that I had in Six Gun. 
That is officially retired. Oh, yep. It probably should be though. Well, yeah. you can see where my hand was resting a lot, and uh, <laughs> I'm just like, okay, you know what? I'm. This guitar is amazing. It sounds wonderful recorded, but it just, it just needs to be retired. So, I retired that guitar, and now I'm on to these um, uh, Alexi models. And the con and I, continues. I love them because it's not just because it's a V. It's because I am actually like I could I can comfortably play on these things. And that's that's half the battle yeah. right there. But you got a name for that thing well, before we get to our uh, juvenile destruction here? Well, so I don't have any special names for these. Because, oh, you like, got to name them. Then well, you know I, they are. well, I do because I do because I just named them after their model. Oh. And uh, like so, Alexi, like this is the like so this one here is called Pinky because that's what Alexi called it. <laughs> Pinky in the brain. Yep. So he called it Pinky and like. He had a green one, and that's called Greeny. And he had a uh, scythe one that was all white, and it had scythe inlays, and it was called Scythe. Now, the okay. difference in the last model that he made, the purple one that I have, is that this one's called Hexed, and the, which is a lot like this kind of uh, pinstripe, and the other one's called Ripped. And I have the Ripped one. Oh, okay. Um, he didn't do the E at the end, like Rip D e or Hexy yep. or anything like that. Um, but those were the last guitars that he worked on before he passed away. So it was super important for me to get one of those. And I'm so happy I got an E2. I would love an ESP, but those are expensive. And um, I don't make jack shit on my videos. <laughs> I work. I Not work, yet. I work for a living. And that is... Uh, good enough for me and you know with you know how i budget and all that stuff i can afford these toys and it's been a long time coming where i all right i need to start getting professional gear you know and, and you deserve it as well yep you really do and this edwards plays so great but my e2 it is a higher quality but honestly both guitars are phenomenal and the next one that i do plan on getting is greeny um at some point we'll be in edwards too and that's going to have the same setup as this where it's going to have the abq booster and then the kill switch on the bottom and those will be the three guitars i'll probably be sporting for a long time beautiful so you ready for a little juvenile destruction always all right so here we go this week's off the roof i just grabbed these at random now i still got to set up my driver make some new ones and they're closing down the bins. Ah, I can't believe they're doing that. Stupid chair. <laughs> is that like the dust or something? Oh, or we see we're getting smarter. So we we're dressing up stuff. Oh, in order sure. to make it a little more interesting, it actually gets the damage. I like it. Like, like, like flower or something? Yep, I'm sure that was all flower. Just... More motion. Oh, perfect game, too. You're hired. Sorry. <laughs> At the peak of my eye movie <laughs> skills there. <laughs> And I moved on to something else, so I'm still working on that, figuring out how to get all the fun stuff going on there. Yeah. But we're basically out of time here, Casey. You got anything left for the good of the order? Um, the only thing I got left is, like, it's just a message of positivity. It's like, no matter how dark it gets, things do get better. And, and the light shines through. And the light shines through, and if I, if I can do it, you can too. And I believe that with everybody. So that's kind of nice to say after, you know, two years of torment. And I feel like things are changing for the better for me. And I'm happy to still be here. So <laughs> and we're happy you're here as well. And thank you for being on again. And man, yeah, you got some stuff that's going to be happening here. Along hanging out with Jay and all that. You, you got a lot, yeah. a lot to look forward to. And I got a lot to look forward to 
watch and see what what's happening out there. Yeah. Especially with you and I hope you get that YouTube thing going. That's what I'm yeah. really looking forward to. So that and finding you out there with Jay and all that fun stuff. So you can find all K Space's stuff down below and uh, information there. I know I basically just have his uh, Instagram and your uh, Facebook. Yeah. So if you need to find him for any reason whatsoever, maybe just give him a nice hi or whatever else yeah. you want to do out there, please do that. And if you can like, subscribe, and share and all that other fun stuff with this video, that really helps us out. And you can find us all up on the Instagrams, down to the Tiki Tacks and all that other fun stuff at Uptown Tonight Podcast. Or else you can find us at Uptown Band Fargo at the same places. And also you can find us at UptownBandFargo.com. And I'll give you all the things that has to do with the band and the podcast all at the same time. So, Casey, mm -hmm. you got to remember, if your drummer's got more charisma than your front man, band may be in trouble. <laughs> but that's why my band's doing just fine. So until next time.